And Chip Patterson is in New Orleans ahead of tonight's 8.45 p.m. kickoff, Texas and Washington. Chip, you've been there for a few days now. What's, what's on the top of your mind as we near kickoff? Uh, I think that the initial cat and mouse, you know, so much conversation with Washington's players uh, about the way that they plan to uh, attack this Texas defense. You know, so many conversations with uh, Texas's coaches about the different things that they have to do to be able to limit Michael Penix Jr. in a wide receiver room that, that really might not be matched in all of college football. And when we get down to it, we are talking about Steve Sarkeesian and Kalen DeBoer, uh, not only as excellent play callers and ga game planners during the week, but but also great at making those in-game adjustments. And so, you know, as the, uh, the, the, the football types will, t will tell you, it's called pass the chalk. We're going to see somebody show their hand. Then there's going to be an adjustment. Then there's going to be a wrinkle. Then there's going to be a counter. So that's what I'm looking for. What do we see early? Who establishes the leverage? And then, most importantly, what is the response? Washington has won 20 straight games. One of those wins came against Texas in a dome in a bowl game last year, the Alamo Bowl, does either side take anything from that game? Because there are, oh, the two quarterbacks played in that game, there are a lot of players who also played in that one. Sure, I'm going to say Texas, no, Washington a little bit. Overall, not much. But for Washington, I mean, it is yet another piece of affirmation. And I don't think that the Huskies really need that. I think that their self-confidence is incredibly high. I think they understand, you know, based on everything they've accomplished this season, that they shouldn't look at themselves as underdogs at all, regardless of what the betting market says. And pointing to that Alamo Bowl is like, what? why would we be intimidated by these guys for any reason? We just beat them. But this is a different. Texas Longhorns football team in terms of its DNA. Uh, last season, uh, we heard that Bijan Robinson, Roshan Johnson, Demarion Overshawn, those were the player leaders. And now Steve Sarkeesian explains it's not three guys leading 115. There are 30 or 40 true leaders, guys on both sides of the ball, that have really stepped up as Texas really tries to address the culture issue that was preventing a program with talent and resources from being able to capitalize on that just one double digit win from 2010 all the way until this season what has changed the talent's always been there the resources have always been there but the culture has been improved so Washington a little bit in terms of affirmation but for the Texas Longhorns I know a lot of the roster is the same but it's a different team you wrote a nice article cbssports.com on Texas's return to glory and, and whether or not they're quote unquote back that's subjective I mean is it getting to the playoff is it getting to the national championship game is it winning at all set that aside but but we know all the pressure that's always on this Texas program now that they're here in position what pressure will they face tonight I think that there is going to be a number one, uh, a little bit of an environmental pressure. And what I mean by that is the expectation is that there is going to be a lot of burnt orange in the Superdome. And if things don't go well, which very well could happen when you've got a team like Washington, you know, Michael Penix and those wide receivers, they come out. Like if there's a 14 nothing lead, you know, what does Texas have? You know, that DNA and that culture that I was writing about, that will be tested if all of a sudden things Things aren't going their way, and all the fans in this building, they start to groan, they start to grumble, uh, you know, in the return to being back. And for the record, I think back is competing for championships, whether that's conference championships, national championships, competing for championships, that is back. So I do believe that Texas is back, but they still haven't crossed over that last threshold, and it's winning games like this. But the good news for Texas is that you look at what how they played against Alabama and Tuscaloosa, you looked at how they played against Oklahoma. Oklahoma State in that Big 12 title game when the money's on the table Quinn Ewers has been at his best the Longhorns have been at their best and right now tonight in New Orleans the money's on the table again yeah what can Texas draw from that early season victory in Tuscaloosa hostile environment Quinn Ewers playing his best ball when it mattered the most yeah, that is that is something that I think really, really matters. Um, and actually, some of Texas's coaches and players have told us this week that it was even the, the first game against Alabama, the one that was in Austin, that allowed that team and that roster to say, okay, we can trade paint with teams and, and programs like this. And then you follow it up with the win against Tuscaloosa. Uh, I think that it is basically allowing them to say, you know, all of the coaching that has been instilled in this roster – 
So, okay, it can work, and that is able to give you the confidence. I mean, this is a this is a Texas team that, like, Tavondre Sweat, for example, told me, he said, we were a part of 5-7, and seven, and, and we decided we don't ever want that to happen again for Texas football. And he says that the Jonte Cook, uh, the freshmen and sophomores, the talented players who are coming into this program, Cedric Baxter, that they also have that kind of hunger and readiness to contribute immediately. So you know things are changing for the Longhorns right now, and the win in, in Tuscaloosa against a team like Alabama absolutely allowed uh, this Texas program to realize how close they were to being right here year playing for a national championship and a lot of those Washington players as well they were a part of a team that had a really bad season before a coaching change and now here they are they've won 20 in a row and how about the way they've done it the last nine games no one has ever done this they've won yeah. nine straight games by 10 or fewer points how why are they so successful in these toss-up games late Okay, uh, I've got the answer that the players in the in Kayla DeBoer gave me, which is they say it's a they have player led leadership, and that's great. I mean, every team would love to have player led leadership, but this is also a Washington team that's old. They have six six year seniors on this team, lots of fifth year seniors, guys who have played a lot of football, and it hasn't all been football together, but it is at least the experience where they feel very ready, they feel very mature, and on the sideline in the fourth quarter. When it's tight, they're, they're just going through the game the same way they would have in the first quarter just because everything is so fundamental. Everything is just a part of the way that this Washington team handles its business. So Kalen DeBoer says, no, we've got our players. They set the tone. They lead the way. I, I, I'm just going to oversimplify it. I just think they're old, they're experienced, they're mature, and they are certainly hungry to capitalize on this opportunity here at the end of their college careers. They were a double-digit dog in that Pac-12 championship game to Oregon and came through in that. They, they are getting points in this one as well. The line is down to three and a half. Texas minus three and a half. The total 61 and a half. What's your pick for tonight, Chip? Okay, I'm going to be going Texas 37, Washington 31. Uh, I think that this is a Longhorns team that has been built the right way. It has been built in a way that is preparing them for the move to the Southeastern Conference. We're talking about the lines of scrimmage on offense and on defense. That's where this game is won. So for the betting market, Texas 37, 31, that will be the Longhorns covering, and that will be maybe a little nervy, but at least an over at the end of the game. I don't know who's running out behind you if it's the security team or what but they are chugging onto the field we're chugging closer to kick chip patterson sugar bowl 8:45 eastern tonight